Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Took kind of a little bit of time off there over Christmas and New Year's. Um, yeah, life gets in the way. Sorry about that. I might add, however, we did get Bobby's Evolution Motor up and running. And if anyone got a chance to look at that video, Bobby's really happy with his motor and it really runs well. Of course, he rode it over to see me, which was about 70 miles an hour, miles from here, 70 miles from here. By the time he got here, well, it was pretty obvious his uh, charging system was fried, so we had to build him up a new charging system. And anyway, wherever he is, he's out riding and having fun now, which is about all I care about. So that's cool. So today, oh, first I want to say if you're enjoying our videos, please subscribe. And when you do that, please click on the notification bell, which will tell you when there's a new video up on our, on our uh, video channel, our YouTube channel. Okay, so I went for a ride Saturday with Fred, the other cameraman, cameraman Fred. We have cameraman Mike working today. Cameraman Fred and I went for a ride, and we were both riding our panheads. I'm riding my red 52 baby doll. He is riding his red and black 48. And I mean, we had fun. We rode all over Riverside, California, and just had a ball. And of course, we started kind of screwing around a little bit. First thing you know, we were kind of jamming through town at about Mach 1, having fun. We did alert one of the local uh, police officers who was very nice and decided to ignore us like maybe we'd go away and he did these old bearded bikers that are older than God trying to play like that I understand but anyway we had a real good time the only thing is I mean I can blow Fred's bike off easy enough he's not here to argue the point so mine will blow his off is that uh, my clutch was slipping and if you remember, we did a video a while back on doing clutches, and I cleaned and serviced this clutch. And apparently, I didn't tighten it down enough. I could put more spring pressure on it. So I thought what I would do is get into it and do that, except that when you do that, you should check it first, because if it's been slipping for a while, the plates are liable to be pretty gummy, so you want to clean them and then tighten up your springs. I guess what I'm saying more than anything else is I'm not perfect. Nobody is. You set something up, you do it to the best of your ability, and if you're not happy with it, go back in and do it again, which is what I'm doing today. So instead of talking about it, I think we've listened to me long enough. I'm tired of listening to me. So I'm going to clean this first plate off, and it's a nice plate. I'm just inspecting it all over again. Um, this particular clutch, I use a steel plate in the bottom of it so that the uh, clutch lining on the fiber plate won't dig into the bottom of the clutch basket. This being an aluminum clutch basket because it's a belt drive, I just do it like that. And actually, some of the belt drives come with a steel plate that you can put in there. This is one I made up. I actually rounded the edges so it would bottom real nice in there. And I took the buffers off so that it would bottom in there, again, real nice. So this plate bottoms in there, and it is silent. And I'm cleaning this with alcohol because... That's what I do. That's my favorite cleaner. It's just isopropyl alcohol. Um, I get it at one of the real discount stores. Don't want to start advertising stores, but that's what I do. And uh, I get this nice and clean. We'll see how I feel about it. Now, I'm going to lean over. I don't want to run into the cameraman, but I'm going to get my air hose and blow this thing off. Now one of the first things you want to look for when you open it up and you find the plates are a little gummy 
is you want to be sure. Let's see, I probably started speaking before the camera could adjust to the sound. This is a very cool automatic video camera. And it does all these things on its own. But it's slightly smarter than I am, so I have to catch up with it once in a while. So I will dwell in my speaking for a moment while the camera catches up. Okay, I was cleaning this clutch plate. I decided it was a little gummy. And that's from the plates slipping on each other. Not because there's oil in there. There is not oil in there. Now, every time I blow this air hose, I'm going to stop and wait for the sound to catch up. There, I didn't use so much air. That was probably better. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I've got some 220 wet or dry paper here, which I'm using dry. And I'm just going to go lightly over these plates. Another thing I noticed with these plates, I don't know what the actual dimension is supposed to be on this particular set of plates. I could speak to the manufacturer and find out how thin I can let them get. But I was looking them over, and they're getting thin. I don't know why. They've only been in this bike 20-some years. But... I think 20-some years. I've had the bike a long time, and I, I probably had a couple of clutches in it. I don't remember. Anyway, now I'm going to blow this off lightly. And again, the plates are getting thin. The next time I take them out, I'll probably put in a new set. And the next question from everyone is going to be, what brand are you going to buy? I don't know. Okay. So that plate is back in the uh, clutch basket. And now I can uh, wipe this steel off real quick, which is pretty funny because it's dry. I don't really need to be doing this steel. Now, we want to be sure... I know I'm saying the same things over again that I showed in the last video on doing these clutches. I don't remember if I did it on the pan head or I did it on the knuckle head. But I know I did it on one of the videos. You always want to be careful when you're putting the steel plates back in where they say out. You want to be sure and put them with the word out facing out. And that's so that these little buffer springs will be going in the right direction. If you have them. If you don't have them, it's not an issue. And there that steel is in place. Now looking at where the buffer springs are, you want it, we can call them buffers or anti-rattlers or any of those things that you might want to call them. When you stack the steels in one after another, you have to, to stagger them so that we put them with buffer here. The plate before it had a buffer here. Okay, we'll get into that as we go along. So right now, I'm going to uh, clean up this fiber plate here. I don't know why I think clutches are so much fun, but clutches for some reason, reason have always been one of my favorite things. I'm the guy who can make your clutch work good. And then I go out and start racing with my buddy Fred. His clutch works fine. I did it. Mine wasn't working well. So there you have it. True Confessions. always wear a white shirt when you do this. Okay. So again, take a little paper here and just rough them up. 
They'll grab much better. And when these plates are really thick, I have been known to do them on a belt sander. But these are really clean. These are not needing that much attention. And we'll blow it off. This is, of course, taking me a while because I'm doing each plate individually. And if anyone's getting bored, I'll understand. But the things I need to show last are important. So please, if you're watching this for the sake of getting information out of it, watch the whole video. It won't be a lot longer. And the things I'm going to show last are important, too. Okay, again, staggering the steels. Like so. And there we go. Now I think what we need to do is we've only got a couple more discs to go. And uh, then we can get finished up here. Let's see. I love these paper towels. They're just great. Besides that, I ran out of red rugs. Red, red rags. I'll get some more of those, too. All right. We dry this off again. We can dry the alcohol very quickly with the air hose. I don't know if they even still make these clutch plates like this. These are old Barnett clutch plates. Uh, they're kind of neat because they're they're very lightweight. The uh, fiber is attached to aluminum. So instead of being a heavy old steel plate, these things are aluminum. The idea, idea behind that being less rotating mass. How much does that help? I have no idea. But they're cool. I'm going to blow this off. Hopefully, I waited long enough for the camera to adjust its sound. That's the thing about doing YouTube videos. There's so much to learn. Okay, we've got one of each left to do. Yeah, like I said, this stuff's pretty clean for me having it apart not too long ago. And, uh, and I keep doing things as they come up. Today is Monday. I think one of my neighbors needs a needs a uh, a seal put in his inner primary. On his Dyna. He has a 2002 Dyna. And I'm going to be putting a primary seal in that. 
So we'll see about doing a video on that too. That shows that I do whatever comes up. We did a 97 Evo motor. I'm constantly playing with baby doll just because I ride her all the time. Same thing with the knucklehead. And uh, now I'm going to do a twin cam transmission seal. My shovel head's taking a kind of a rest right now. A sabbatical, if you will. I think she's waiting for me to design some sidecar mounts or something, but she's laying around being cool. We did something Sunday that is uh, something I... I don't know how many people have been through it, probably a lot. We went for a ride on Sunday. That's cameraman Mike, myself, and Mike's girlfriend. And we watched her learn to ride. Which is a little nerve wracking because it's scary. She's a sweet girl. She's learning to ride very well. And it's still scary. Okay, now all of the plates are in place. Everything is ready to go. I put a little bit of grease on the adjusting screw. And now I'm going to... Uh, Put this whole assembly on it. This is the releasing disc. This is an aftermarket one. Um, when you're setting this thing up, I usually set it up to the measurement as per the book. The only thing is when you're measuring off of this surface, let me get that clean, off of this surface, is that the springs are tunneled in. So you have to add that to your measurement, the depth of where that relief is for that spring to sit. So I've already done that. And what I always do is when I take one apart, I set my little scale for the measurement that it is before I take it apart. Because what I'm going to do is put it right back where it is was not where it is, where it was. And then I'm going to tighten up the adjusting nuts just a little more. So it won't slip this time. That stud is, uh, is an issue. Let's see if it wants to start now. You noticed I just picked a different nut every time, or a different stud. Anyway, that's what I did. So there we are. And now I can take the uh, washer off of here. And this washer, on this early type releasing, uh, this is the pressure plate, okay. And the tool I use to hold all those springs in place is a shovel head um, valve spring retainer. And there it is. Garden variety shovel head valve spring retainer. Okay.
Now, we're not really interested in that yet. But what we are interested in is where these springs are. So we're going to go like that. That one's set just like it was when I took it apart. As is that one. And that one. Boy, I got them all right on the money. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, that was working not well. It was actually, the clutch was slipping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two, on each one of these. One, two. Why did I go two clicks instead of one? Because I can. I just wanted to. And there it is. Now we're going to make sure they're all even. This one wants to go in one more click. Okay, now they're all even. Now what we can do, just for fun, is we can... I'll just grab this screwdriver. Check this. Now that's got not enough play in it. We need to have just a little play in it. And then we can tighten the lock nut on that adjusting screw. The main point is you don't want the rod inside and the throw out bearing and all that stuff under pressure all the time. So we have to have a little play there. Okay. So there we got it. Right now I think what we're going to do, just because we can, is we're going to hook it up momentarily, being very careful not to uh, hurt our widow selves. Okay. All right. And that clutch releases beautifully. Okay. Now I'll need to put the floorboard back on, get the, the outer primary cover back on, and all that stuff back in working order before I get this adjusted exactly right. But believe me, from doing it a lot of times, it's pretty close right now. So anyway, I hope I explained some of the things this time that, that I got asked after I finished it last time. In case anyone's wondering, when you ask me questions, when you write into the comment section, I read every one of them and I do my best to answer every one of them. I ran across a few in there the other day I didn't realize I had. Now I'm too embarrassed to answer them as much, as much later as it is. But I do answer all of the comments I possibly can every morning. So... I hope again that I covered the things that I didn't cover in the last time. I hope that was a good explanation. And I'll talk to you again soon. And until then, see you out on the road.